Oh, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Now, uh, what the deuce have you been up to, CS? I hear you cry. Well, stuff other than amateur radio. Although I have done one or two bits, as you can see, the uh, the tabletop is back to its usual uh, state of uh, disarray and uh, debris. Now, this is the uh, this little alloy box here uh, is the box that's going to mount, be mounted under the air box in the uh, in the linear amplifier remember the air box the bottom of the air box is actually the top of this box these are the two toroidal transformers that are going to run the fans and uh, there's the uh, there's the big fat over there that's uh, going to set the cathode bias so that's what I've been doing. I've been mucking around with that, and um, I'll probably change the colour of that wire actually to brown, because the colour coming from the valve base for the cathode is brown. So it'll just uh, where it joins up onto a solder tag somewhere, solder tag strip. It will just uh, look a little more linear uh, if it's brown. Uh, this one here, this black wire here goes to the negative HT line, uh, which is black. So that's fine, and. Uh, as you can see there's not very much in there there's a couple of big resistors under here all they're doing is uh, they're in they're in parallel and they're providing a one and a half ohm resistor in series with the uh, with the fan supply just to drop the fan supply down just a tad and the only reason I use those huge resistors you can see those in there hopefully the only reason I use those huge resistors was that um, I had them um, in th that resistor is only going to be dissipating 7 watts and they are 100 watt resistors so there's not very much chance of those failing. Okay, now um, also uh, where the lid goes on where the lid goes on here there's a plastic strip stuck on the underside of it now these are angled down and I've looked through these holes which are just sort of air, air vent holes and uh, there is uh, uh, there's there's enough there's plenty enough clearance between this and the bottom of the lid, but just to be on the safe side, I put a plastic strip in there just to uh, just to make sure that uh, there's there's nothing uh, nothing's going to contact on the uh, on the bottom of the lid. All right, now um, let's just get rid of that. Let's take these off. I'm not going to show you anything exciting like the varying light bulb brightness. I think uh, I think you've probably seen a bit of that before. And I don't want you to become overexcited. Right now, um, I heard from my mate Angus again, and uh, he was—he's still—he's still wondering what tuner to make or to buy, what what sort of antenna matcher to buy. And I—I uh, uh, I flicked him an email, but um, as I said on that previous video, where I actually drew the L match circuit out. You now the L match circuit is so simple. Um, hang on, let's just get this. If I can just get these wires out of the way. Let's poke those in there so they're not going to be bothered if I stand something on top of it. There we go, because it would be better to stand it on top of it, I think, than try and clear enough space to have the thing sitting on the table. OK, so I actually knocked up a very quick L-match. There we go. A very quick L-match. And uh, just a variable inductor and a variable capacitor screwed to a piece of scrap metal. And there's the uh, uh, there's the input there. As you can see, the input comes in here, goes along here to one side of the inductor. Other side of the inductor comes out. There's the output, goes to that insulator there. Um, and uh, there's a ground bolt there. So that's all it is. And the capacitor has a fly lead on it. Because remember, with an L match, if you want it to match high impedances. The capacitor needs to be connected to the antenna side of the coil. And to match it to low impedances, the capacitor needs to be connected to the input side. So that's the radio side of the inductor. So all I do is that. There we go. And there's the capacitor connected to the input side. So that's for tuning low impedances. And that's, that's for tuning high impedances. 
now I only uh, knock this together oh and uh, when I bolted this when I bolted this um, output insulator to the piece of scrap metal um, it did occur to me that there's sort of inserts in here threaded inserts you know six mil inserts and I thought well they're going to be fairly close together in the middle somewhere so uh, I put the, um, put the capacitor meter, capacitance meter on there and measured it and it's 2.2 picofarads <laughs> but uh, I don't suppose that's going to I don't suppose that's going to bother us too much okay so this is the simplest sort of antenna matcher uh, you can make one, one variable inductor one variable capacitor and uh, what I thought I'd do is I'd put my random wire antenna down the garden and I would use this um, just to match on I don't know 40 meters 20 meters 10 meters whatever and um, when I get a match for each band I would measure the inductance, I would measure the capacitance and then I'd make up a box with those fixed values in the box so um, there wouldn't be any switching required because the RF would go through its preferred impedance so if I just connect the three circuits in parallel, if you see what I mean uh, and I, I'm on 40 meters it will select, it will automatically select the 40 meter inductor and capacitor I change bands and it will automatically select the other simply because it, the RF will, will just travel through its preferred impedance and the impedance of the, uh, the other tuned circuits on the other bands uh, will not be a good match so it will, it will ignore those uh, so there'll be no switching, be as simple as possible, just three coils, three capacitors in a box and um, it will save having an auto tuner um, out in the garden so that's what I've got in mind. So that's why I sort of threw together this uh, very quickly threw together this um, this L match. All right. So let's just have a little uh, little play with it. Uh, I'm going to set the capacitance. Uh, I don't know, halfway maybe. And uh, let's set the inductance for. Mm, I don't know, let's set the inductance for minimum. Now because the uh, the inductor's in series with the um, RF path and the capacitor is across it, you can uh, it, it actually um, forms a, a low pass filter as well. Just remember inductive reactance increases with frequency. Capacitive reactant reactants decreases with frequency. So if I'd had the L match the other way around, so that the coil went to ground and the capacitor was in series, it would still work, and would probably be advantageous for lightning crashes and stuff like that because the antenna would effectively be connected to chassis through the roller inductor. Um, it's not so; it, it will let that any uh, sort of high frequency harmonics and stuff through, or it will let more through than uh, with it arranged as it is here. Okay, so let's uh, just for fun, because that's what this channel is all about, fun with amateur radio. Now, <laughs> just for fun, uh, let me put the meter, where can I put the meter? Where can I put the meter? You see that? Looks a bit glary to me. That's just glare, isn't it? Uh, where can I put the meter? There we go. And I've got a pot here, and I'm going to connect the pot to the meter. I know it's a, only a resistive load, but this is only just a quick, quick experiment, or a quick demonstration, whatever you want to call it. Oh. I did say quick, didn't I? What are we doing? Nine minutes already, blimey. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? Okay, so if I put that on 2K... So we've got 291 ohms there. 
291 ohms. I'll just, you can see that, I'll just adjust that to, uh, let's make that 300 ohms. That's a bit of a fiddly pot, this. Okay, let's make it 302 ohms. See that? So that's on the 2K range, that's 0 0.301, so that's 301 ohms. So I'm going to take that off, take the crop clips off, get that out of the way, and then I'm going to clip that as the load for my oil match. Okay, so the oil match has now got a 300 ohm load. So let's get the trusty U kits. There we go. Okay. Now, how can I hold this and twiddle the knobs? PPP! Alright, so let's have a look at it on uh, 7093, which is the local WA chit chat channel. As you can see at the moment, the SWR is, well, I hope you can, I hope that's focused, is 7 to 1, and the impedance is 64 ohms. So let's just try winding that down. Now, this could be a bit awkward because the tripod's in the way. Can I hold that there, like that? and let you see what I'm doing at the same time. So I'm winding in some inductance. As you can see, the roller inductor is a little bit dirty. So those little spikes are there. You can see the SWR coming down. 5 to 1, 4.6. More inductance comes in. 3.5, 3.2. Mm, OK. So 3.2, it's about as good as we're going to do with the inductor by the look of it. And so what we can do with the capacitor. Okay, it's coming down, coming down, coming down, 2.3, 2 2.1, it's in the green now. 1.7, 1.6. 6. only 37 ohms though. Let's give it a bit more. Inductance. There you go, it's 1.3. So you can see the, the impedance is coming up to 45 ohms. 48, 50. Okay, so all right, I took my hand off it. So slightly uh, changed very, very slightly when I did that. Oh, look at that. SWR is now 1. SWR is now 1 and the impedance is 50 ohms on 7093. You can see how flat that is. I know it's only a resistive, uh, it's a resistive load, but um, um, broadcasting companies tend to use L matches. AM radio stations tend to use L matches because they're very broad tune and they're so broad in fact that they don't affect the, uh, they don't affect the modulation. So that your AM radio station, when you're playing all the hits, Sounds peachy. All right, well, there you go. I hope that's in focus. Uh, I hope you found that uh, quick demonstration of a thrown together L match interesting or useful. Um, as I say, very easy to make. And, uh, you know, you could go to, a, yeah, go to a ham fest or something like that, pick up a variable inductor, pick up a uh, variable capacitor. All you need is a bit of scrap metal to screw it to, and um, you're in business. Very, very simple, uh, very, very simple design. I can't tell whether that's in focus or not, so I apologise if it isn't. Little U kits there. It might be difficult actually focusing on this and that. So maybe if I if I do that, that might actually uh, might actually focus, so you can see the match there. One and uh, and fifty ohms. So, the L-match, very, very simple design, 
and uh, well, well worth the effort. You know, if you've and if you've if you if you're new to the hobby and you've got an 817, you wouldn't need a capacitor anywhere near this sort of size. You know, this this capacitor here. Um, even if you even if heaven forbid I was running a thousand watts. Now that's very unlikely. If I was running a thousand watts through this, the voltage, the voltage across this capacitor would only be about in, into 300 ohms. The voltage across that capacitor would only be 540 odd volts. Now this this will probably take 2,000 volts. This this capacitor, so you wouldn't need any anything near that size. Um, so you know a small capacitor, and if you didn't have uh, access to a roller inductor, just wind a coil and put some taps on it. You could have a fly lead with a crocodile clip going across the taps, and that will do the same thing. So that would—that's um, a very, pardon me, very simple way of getting you on the air. If you've—if uh, you're just coming into the hobby, the, the hobby, you got an eight, got yourself an eight one seven, and um, you just want uh, a nice simple tuner to match your uh, bit of bit of wire just thrown down the garden. All right. Well, that's the uh, that's the all match, and um, I don't know actually whether to just draw a quick circuit on the board for that or not. Um, shall I, shall I, shall I? Uh, I'm looking at the board and it's still got something written on it so uh, as it's hard dried I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, probably, um, I'll probably leave it for now because I'll have to give that a good wipe over and um, yeah. Okay. I'll leave that. Uh, I'll leave that for now. And this has already run for 16 minutes. So uh, anyway, I hope you found that interesting or uh, or useful or informative. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time.